there are 8 million YouTube talks online. But if you like, you want to really experience it, you have to come in person. It's great. I mean, you'll just meet such cool people. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Braden Ganetsky and I've been writing an expression template uh, parser generator, sorry, parser combinator library, um, as if there aren't enough of those. Um, and I've run into some compile problems. Uh, my expression template type names are too long, at least I think so. And so is the title of this talk. So I'll just give a very quick demonstration of how my library works. The syntax is kind of like boost spirit, but not really, it's loosely inspired. Um, so I wanna parse someone's name into a person that has a first and last name. This example isn't particularly relevant, but I'll just build up a big parser. So I have three parsers here. I have an uppercase parser that parses any uppercase letter, a lowercase parser parses any lowercase letter, and then a white space parser parses zero or more of any of these white space characters and then ignores the value. And then I can use these later. Let's make another parser called name. Let's assume that all names are one uppercase letter followed by one or more lowercase letters. They're not, but let's assume. And then I collapse them back down into a string view with join. I use this now in my full name parser, which is some white space. I put a name into a string, more white space, another name into a string, and then white space. So that's a full name, assumedly. And then let's say a person is a full name, but it has to be the complete string. So there can't be anything left over once you've parsed the string. And let's apply, like tuple apply, into a person struct. All right, let's see how it works briefly. If I call dot parse on this parser with my name, uh, the result type is kind of like an optional, so let's check if it has anything. If it does, let's print out my first name, then my last name, and it works. But what is the type of the person parser? Any guesses? Anyone want to shout it out? Did anyone guess that this? <laughs> so it's, it's this, um, and it's very long, and I'm sure with expression templates you can run into longer things. Can we do better? Let's simplify first. So let's start with a struct template called add, and then let's overload operator plus uh, so that it returns an add. Um, inside my main function, all I'm going to do is just use operator plus for three S's. And that's it, let's see what the type name of this is. Well, I use MSVC, so it looks like this. You can see the um, uh, evaluation from left to right. Uh, this looks like it should just about work. How can we reduce this? Well, I found a really cool trick that works in MSVC and I wanna show it off. So let's clear out some things, make some space, and here's the trick. Let's create a templated lambda just like this. And that's all you gotta do. So I'm calling it make add. Uh, it doesn't take any arguments, it doesn't really matter. I create um, a local struct that I inherit from add. We assume that add actually has functionality for real, but here it doesn't. Um, and then we return that instead of returning add. And then so for operator plus, we have to call make add. So what do we get now? <clears throat> Excuse me. Well, we get this ugly incantation. And that's really ugly, and it's actually longer than it was before. So why is it better? Let's add some more pluses. What's the type now? Oh, it's about the same. The only thing that changed was the number on the lambda. So now it's lambda six instead of lambda two, but it's about the same. Does this affect compilation times? Is this actually what the compiler is using as the type name? So let's stress test this. So I like getting stressed out, so I'll put all these pluses here with different associativity, um, and then, or bracketing, and then um, let's call it seven times. And let's just see what happens. So the pre-optimized case looks like this. The post-optimized case, supposedly, looks like this. Um, I left out the body of the lambda. And so what happens in the build times? So I ran this locally on my laptop, and I found out uh, that the build time is 40 seconds beforehand and it's less than two seconds afterwards. And this is the only change. So what we can see here is that the type name was so long that it was causing the compiler to get slower, and this actually fixed that problem. That's incredible. So before I end, I do have some caveats here. Um, it is MSVC only. I tried to get something in GCC and Clang, and it actually, the same trick, made the names longer, so I don't quite know what to do. About an hour ago, I was told about something that might work, but it was an hour ago and I had already prepared this talk. Um, the new type that you're using is a derived type from the one you wanted, so 
be careful if you're ever going to use this trick. Um, maybe don't, but. And then um, this trick only works exactly as shown. You can't have a templated call operator on the Lambda. Uh, you can't have a struct inside a function template. It has to be a Lambda template. Anything else I've tried also doesn't work. Um, but if you have any ideas, I'd love to talk about this because this has uh, been a fun thing to look at. So uh, thank you all very much for listening. <laughs>